welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the program, the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope your week has gone well, and I hope your heart and mind is already looking forward to being in your Bible teaching local church. Well, right now, my Bible sits open to the very last verse of 2 Peter chapter 2. If at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 will be our focus. Along with your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes with that pen and paper handy. Not only can you take notes from our study, but also be ready to jot down our contact information that my announcer will be giving here at the end of the program. I have some gospel tracts I want to put into your hand. A gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. Jesus has called his followers to go into all the world and give the gospel to everybody. And one of the tools we have at our disposal to do that is a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I'll highlight one of those tracks and tell you how to get a free sample packet of our tracks from us here in just a moment. But let me lead into the Bible study time this way. Today, we will see two animals mentioned in our verses. Neither one of them is used in a nice, polite way. They are both used to picture shame, filthiness, and and an unthinking mindset. But that got me to thinking. I sat down and began to make a list of all the animals in the Bible that I could remember. So let me ask you, if you were to begin to remember any animals mentioned in the Bible, which one would come to your mind first? Well, the first for me was the donkey that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Next was Balaam's donkey. The third one for me was that great fish that swallowed Jonah. And the more I thought, the more animals I could recall. But friend, I did not remember the dog or the pig being talked about in my memory banks until I had gotten quite a bit down the line in my list. But it's the dog and the pig that's spoken of here in the last verse of 2 Peter chapter 2. Now, these are the two animals God chose to describe the character and the nature of false teachers. All of this chapter here is a warning about false teachers. I may be pushing the picture a little bit here, but let me ask, would you invite a dog? Would you invite a pig to preach at your church? Please, I hope you're wise enough to say no. We'll come back and begin to read at 2 Peter 2 in a moment. I mentioned those gospel tracts. I have uh, one of our tracts in my hand. We have over 40 different tracts. And when my announcer gives our contact information, if you'll give us your name and address, we will send you that sample packet free of charge. We'd love to do that. Please, please let us do that. One of the tracts uh, that's in that sample packet is this one entitled Infant Baptism with a question mark. And the track on the face also asks this, what? What does the Bible say? This track has the face of a child just beaming and smiling. It's a kind of child that makes you smile. But you know what the Bible says about infant baptism? When you open this gospel track up, there's only one big, I mean big, big word across the face, across the inside of this track. It's the word nothing. The Bible says nothing at all about babies being baptized. You know why? Because the Bible talks about believers' baptism, and the back of the track speaks about that. Friend, so many people are expecting to get into heaven because their mom and dad, their grandma and grandpa, had them baptized when they were a baby. Their baptism may have made for a nice, polite religious ceremony, but it did not deal with the sin issue 
that sin issue can only be dealt with by Jesus and his shed blood. Infant baptism, my friend, you need the track. Let me send it to you along with that sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. All right, 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 20, the Bible says this, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they, being false teachers, are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Now, friend, verse 22 is not, not pretty. And actually, I think it was written exactly for that purpose, to not be pretty. Those teaching and promoting theological liberalism and error may appear to society to be very sophisticated, educated, and correct are, in fact, in God's eyes, like dogs and pigs. Verse 22 uses the word proverb, and more than likely, the proverb being referred to here was one that was in general use and known by people of that day. If I were to turn back to our book of Proverbs, chapter 26 and verse 11, we would read this, as a dog returneth to his own vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. The verse does there talk about the part about the dog, but we find no proverb about the pig returning to his mud hole. God has never been shy to preach to you and me and people of any era using animals. In my very first year in ministry as an assistant pastor, the Lord used Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 to really challenge my heart. That verse says this, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass her master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Now, that word consider means to mentally separate, to see the various parts of things, to think things through. It means to connect the dots on what my condition is right now and what steps and decisions I took and made to get me here. Back then, my prayer, based upon what God was challenging me about, was this, Lord, please make me smarter Lord, please make me as smart as a dumb ox and as a donkey. Lord, please never let me forget who owns me and the tremendous blessing that comes to me by staying in the barn of my heavenly Father. <laughs> the prayer may not have been pretty, but that was my prayer. Now, my fourth word, beginning with the letter E, I've been using a series of E words to deal with verses 20, 21, and 22. My fourth word is the word education. All of Second Peter chapter 2 is about false teachers. There are These are those who absolutely do know Bible truth but have rejected it, and they're teaching others to reject it. So what is God trying to educate us about here in verse 22? Well, I have time for two things. Truth number one is this. False teachers are like dogs in God's view, and I must see them the same way. In Bible culture, I'm told, dogs were seen as dangerous. They were known to be vicious and attacking animals who lived off the prey that they killed. They were known to be greedy and hurtful animals. And here in verse 22, they are seen as eating what they have thrown up. That is the nature, the vile, unclean nature of the dog. Well, the Holy Spirit, through the pen of the Apostle Peter, is saying that these unsaved, truth-rejecting religious teachers have an internal nature which has been totally untouched. It's not altered by Bible truth. They've known the Bible truth. They even gussied up their life some by Bible truth, but they have now shown what they are really like. Just as no person 
concerned with cleanliness would let a dog lick their face right after the dog has just eaten its own vomit, so too we do not let false teachers near us. They're unclean. They'll make us unclean. That's truth number one. Truth number two is this, false teachers are like pigs in God's view, and I must see them the same way. The pig in the proverb had been cleaned up. He'd been all gussied up. Maybe he was uh, gotten ready to go to some county fair to be put on display. How clean and how pink that pig looked. Perhaps he even smelled good, yet Turn your back on that pig for a moment or take that pig back home and before you blink twice, he's back belly deep in his mud hole. What's happened here? Just this, the pig needs that mud to keep itself cool. To please his fleshly makeup, he must go back to the mud hole. Well, these false teachers are unsaved. So what do they do? They live to please the flesh, just like the pig does. Their fleshly drives were talked about here in the chapter in verse 2, verse 10, uh, verse 12, 13, 14, and so on. Back in those verses, we said to beware of religious teachers whose lifestyle, life pattern allows them to not practice the time-honored Bible standards of a holy life. Let me just stop and say this again. When you find a religious teacher who is abandoning the time-honored Bible standards of a holy life practice, run from that teacher. Well, how do I bring 2 Peter chapter 2 to a close? How do I put a capstone on it? Maybe these five things will help. Number one is this. There are false teachers in our day. They're in our pulpits, in the radio, on television, and so on. That's a fact. Number two, false teachers use people to make themselves richer rather than using their teaching ability to strengthen the saints in the truth of God. Number three, false teachers live for the momentary earthly pleasures of the flesh. And number four, false teachers will lead people away from salvation truth, which means this, they're going to lead those that listen to them to the pit of hell for all eternity. And the fifth thing we can take away is this, false teachers must not be allowed in our churches. They will turn our churches into a spiritual mud hole. Now, friend, if you're attending a church that tells you that the Bible contains myths and you and parts of it are just a man's writing and not God's writing, you're in a place that has a false teacher in it. Run away. Don't stay there. You need a local church with a pastor who believes the Bible is God's word. All of it from Genesis to Revelation teaches it accordingly and says, here is the way God's word says we ought to live. If you're trusting in some religious ceremony to make you fit for heaven instead of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you're in great peril. You're headed for hell. But there's an answer. A loving heavenly father sent his son that you through him in his shed blood can be saved from all your sin and be made right in his eyes. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.